I left the city, I've been browsing. Treading water that they drowned in. I head on the swivel. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's Zach, KK Zach Reviews. We are back again with another video, and guys, today's uh, video is going to be the No Time to Die movie review. Uh, this is literally Daniel Craig's last James Bond film. I was lucky enough to get, you know, a couple of weeks ago, get a notification on my Instagram. Um, you know, I follow the IMAX page, and they had uh, a, like a what is it, like a two day earlier, uh, you know, uh, screening of James Bond. It doesn't come out until technically today, but I got to see it on Wednesday. Um, theoretically, it doesn't come out until like Friday for most people, but like you know, for the like for the big moviegoers, usually it comes out usually Thursday night. But they had an early screening on a Wednesday. Um, so I saw it in IMAX with, you know, my dad. He's a big James Bond film, like, fan. He loves all the James Bond movies. He loves, you know, the Mission Impossible movies. Uh, we, me and my sister usually take him to movies like that. He saw the last Mission Impossible movie. Um, and also he saw, you know, all the other James Bond movies. Um, literally, I've been looking forward to this movie ever since it was announced, like, trailers and stuff back in, like, 2019. Um, you know, Daniel Craig is literally my James Bond. I love him as James Bond. I think he kills it each time he plays James Bond. Um, you know, it's crazy enough, for, uh, but, like, my ranking of the James Bond movies, people would probably be like, what the heck? That's, that's a weird w ranking, which we're gonna rank them at the end of this, like, at the end of this video, rank them on, you know, which ones I like the most, or maybe I'll make a separate video, I'm not quite sure, it depends on how, how we go with this video, um, but guys, this movie, um, you know, when we got to the theater, you know, my, my dad hasn't been to the theater in such a long time, like, he, he hasn't been to the theater probably since Mission Impossible, and that came out, I want to say, back in, like, 20, 18 I think that mission the last mission impossible came out so he hasn't been in the theater in a minute He's never been to IMAX. This is his first time that he went to IMAX And you know, I was really happy that he was able to get out of the house and we were able to take him to a movie Especially a movie he wanted to see um so when we got there, you know, we took pictures, you know, me and my brother, and, you know, we took pictures in front of the James Bond poster, um, and, you know, we, um, you know, my dad took a picture, he didn't want to be shown, so we did that or whatever, he doesn't like being on, the, like, being on camera, or, like, he doesn't like taking pictures, so, you know, we took him, and then, you know, we got our, you know, popcorn, I got my Parmesan garlic pretzel bites, and, you know, I, I, I have an AMC theater that's an IMAX theater that I go to, so I, I and I also work at an AMC, so I went to the AM, our uh, local AMC theater that have, like, IMAX, Dolby, and I saw, you know, this movie in IMAX, so, you know, we get in, we get our seats, you know, it's a packed house, literally, like, this is the most packed I've seen a theater in, like, a very long time, like, I, I felt like, you know, I felt like, you know, it was how, you know, it used to be when we went to the movies, you know, like, it'd be a packed house, and, you know, and, you know, everybody would just have a fun time, I got flashbacks when I was, you know, like, before the pandemic, when we would all get together, everybody, and it'd be a packed house, usually on, like, a Thursday, or whatever, or, like, it just felt like, it felt normal to me, um, even though I had my, I had my mask on, my sister had her mask on, my, my brother had his mask on, and my dad had his mask on, so, it, at the same time, it didn't feel normal because we had our masks on, but it felt normal. It felt like, you know, it was nice to, to see everybody together and, you know, we're just there to watch a movie and have a great experience. So, I just, I, I, I just loved this movie. From the beginning of this movie, when we see, of course, the lion, uh, the, you know, the, the, you know, the, um, you know, the lion and stuff, you know, to, like, in the beginning of the movie... And, you know, we see, you know, Daniel Craig walking down, you know, like the circles following him and he ends up shooting. And, you know what I mean, the, the iconic James Bond, you know, um, you know, the, the gun thing, like, you know, it's like, you know what I mean, like, it's, it's so iconic. And just seeing this movie on like, and, and mind you, this was like a three hour movie and I didn't know that. So going into this, I, I, I was, I was, I was living each moment literally as the movie was going on, just saying to myself, you know, I can't believe this is his last movie. I feel that this is his last movie when I was watching the movie. Like, like you know, the, the beginning of the movie in general, that that opening sequence where, like, we see him, you know, living, you know, with Madeline Swan, and, you know, we see her, but we see her backstory, and, and it's like, it's, and, and the, the threat that's coming is 10 times bigger than Spectre, and I love that. Like, I love how all these movies are connected, and it leads to something bigger, and, you know, I'm, mind you, Spectre is my favorite James Bond movie, I think, out of all of them. Like, I love Spectre. Not, people didn't like it, but I loved Spectre. Um, so, I was so happy to see the cast from Spectre come back. You know, the, you know, the, the girl that pl played Madeline come back. And, you know, of course, you know, um, for the, for like, also, like, for the past, like, uh, 
and, and this new franchise we you know Daniel Craig movies you know seeing Q come back seeing you know uh you know um seeing M come back or whatever the new M that we got in you know uh in uh, Spectre seeing all of them come back you know the same person that plays um, you know Money Penny like all of them come back was just awesome and just seeing that opening sequence where we you know he's driving like you know he well, he's trying to get back to he's trying to get to um you know um you know Madeline and we see that you know that that bike sequence when he's on the motorcycle and he ends up like taking off like this he goes up like this this ridge and jumps up and you know we see those people there it was like a the stunt that everybody saw you know in the beginning you know when that when um when that uh, when like you know, we saw set photos and you know, we saw videos and you know of that stunt you know with the motorcycle going up in that big jump and that was such a cool sequence seeing in IMAX that was, mind you that was all filmed with IMAX cameras and you and you know this it and you feel it and you just and just the action that was going on in that sequence, how it got, he went from a motorcycle, he went from his, um, from, you know, his, um, you know, Aston Martin, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so just seeing all that go down, and I think it's called the Aston Martin, uh, DBR, I think that's what it's called, and seeing that old James, the, I, the old iconic James Bond car, you know, from back in the day, seeing that, you know, him use that, and we see that same car at the end of Spectre, when he's driving off with Madeline, and just seeing that car again, um, was just really, really cool to see that go down, and I just really enjoyed seeing all that, and him do that cool action sequence, and going, like, I'd say this movie, out of all of them, out of all the, uh, you know, Daniel Craig movies, this was probably the best action I've ever seen. The cinematography reminded me so much of, you know, Quantum of Solace, and so much of a Casino Royale, like, the way the cinematography was shot, I just, I love it so much. I feel like the James Bond movies in general have great cinematography, but, like, it, it, it was, like, a callback to, like, the earlier days when he played James Bond, and I love that, the way the cinematography was, the way the action was, the way the dialogue was, and, you know, Rami Malek, you know, he was supposed to be the main, he kind of is the main villain in this movie, but he doesn't show up until, like, later in the film, which was like a big shock to me that he didn't show up until later in the film. Um, he probably showed up in like the last act, the last two acts of the of the film, um, which was kind of annoying. Also, also in the beginning for a second, but he was wearing a mask, so you most people wouldn't even know it was him or not. But I just thought that was a little weird. Um, that was my one little gripe about the movie is that he wasn't in it enough. Like for a person, you know, you get Rami Malek to play the villain. And he's barely in it. He's only in like maybe like three scenes, maybe if not just two, really. So that was kind of that was kind of weird. Um, I I kind of wished he was in it more, and you felt more of that presence of that villain because we felt that presence bigger than like we felt we felt his organization bigger than Spectre, but we didn't see him. And it would have been nice if he was at the forefront of all of the stuff he um that his uh, you know or this corporation organization does in this movie. They make so much you know um. So, like, they do so much, you know, terror, you know what I mean? Like, you know, in, the, in, in so much, you know, uh, destruction, but we don't see him at the forefront of all of it. We just see the name of his, of his like, his, you know, his corporation, his organization. So, and that was my one little gripe about the movie. On top of, you know, it wasn't really that bad, but you could really feel the runtime. Um, the runtime, I, I really started feeling right as, you know, in the slower parts of the movie, which, mind you, there, it, there's a lot of action in this movie, but there's a lot of, like, story building, which I didn't mind because I'm a big, I liked a lot of story, um, you know, and it blend, and, and, and matches well with the action, but, you know, you can really tell that, you know, they're trying to do as much as they can to do, like, a big bang, literally, for Daniel Craig's last movie, like, this is his last movie, they want to make it as long as possible, they really want to, like, you know, end this story in a great way, and, you know, you, I, I had a blast throughout the entire movie. I did feel the runtime, but I had a blast while I was watching it. I didn't really start feeling the runtime probably until, like, towards, like, the, maybe, like, the, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know, like, maybe, like, like, towards the end of the film slash semi-middle of the film. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost, like, out of the middle, and it's almost to the end I started feeling it. Um, but those were in the slower moments where there's a lot of story building and a lot of explanation, and... I didn't, I didn't mind it that much because there was a lot of action to balance all that out when action was needed, and there was a lot of this great story building and slow moments when it was needed there too, so it was the best of both worlds and how like it blended in very well, but at some points, I did feel the runtime. My dad felt the runtime too. Like We were all talking about it saying, you know, it really started feeling long. You know, the movie was at 7 o'clock, and we didn't get out until like exactly 10 o'clock, 
So I mean, yeah, it was a three hour movie. So I just I I was not I didn't I didn't even know it was gonna be three hours. I didn't mind it being three hours because again I understood why they made it three hours because there was a lot of story there and there was a lot of them trying to like you know, pay homage to like, you know, Daniel Craig being James Bond and this is his last movie. Um so I mean that last, you know, that that again that, you know, uh, you know, uh, motorcycle scene slash, you know, uh, car scene in the beginning was awesome. And then there's a scene where like he meets up with this agent, um, and this is and, and this is the um, you know I think the actress that plays her she's like I she's not a she's not a double O, um, but she's an agent that um, that what what do you call? It? Let me let me let me look this up real quick. She's an a, a, agent that his friend hooked her, that his friend hooked um, you know him up with to get the uh, to get this package from the new you know organization that's bigger than Spectre. And um, you know uh, Anna D. Um, uh, Armas, uh, Ar- Armas. Uh, yeah, her name is Anna D. Armas. Um, she, um, you know, she um, is. I-, I-, I love her. She's a great actress. I lo- I, uh, I actually was first introduced to her in Knives Out. Um, so you know she plays uh, you know Marta. Um, you know in Knives Out. So if you and it's funny, funny enough, Daniel Craig is in Knives Out. So it's like they they both worked on you know they both worked together before. So I bet you like it like maybe like he said oh you know you know she'd be a perfect pit, you know fit for this role and that maybe that's how she got in or I don't even know or like you know she's just a phenomenal actress. So you know. I just love how they've worked together before because they had great chemistry in that, you know, that ballroom sequence that we see in the trailers and stuff. And, you know, she's kicking ass, you know, with her, um, she uses like a machine gun and stuff like that. And she's just kicking ass. And I, I, I just loved her. She did a great job. I loved her character. Um, it was a funny scene because, you know, he asked, uh, he ends up asking her, you know, uh, you know, how long have you been on the job? And she's like, I've only, I've only been in training for three weeks. And it was just so funny to me. He's like, he's, he looks at her like, and you're in the field, like, are you, are you going to be okay, like, so I just thought that was funny, um, that, you know, that, that little moment, but I just, I loved that moment, I, I, I love her, she's great, she did a great job in this movie when we had her, hopefully, you know, if there is going to be a continuation James Bond movies, which there is, because we end up do get, we end up getting a new double O in this movie, and they play with the whole, like, oh, it, it, you know, it's just a number, this, this, and that, because originally people were not okay with the fact that, that there would be a female James Bond, which I think is stupid. It's it's anybody can be James Bond. Like it it it, it doesn't matter. Um, so you know, and they kind of like respected the fact of it's like you know, in this movie we see the new Double O take the name Double O Seven, and you know she you know, pokes fun at James Bond, saying, "Oh, you know, how does that make you feel that I'm the new Double O Seven? You think they would retire that number?" And, you know, you can tell it kind of gets to, you know, James a little bit. He's kind of upset about it and stuff. And, you know, there's a moment in the movie where you we, we do see her give him back the 007 title. And, and he's like, what, what are you doing? And she's like, you know, like you said, it's just a number. And that's true. It's just a number. James Bond will continue. And, and it's – and double – there can always be different double So that number is retired to pay homage. Okay, the number's retired. There is a new du- there is a new double O, and I'm not sure if she'll just be called double O or double O whatever. But there is a new James Bond, and I I, I I'm and I know the the girl that uh, plays this new James Bond. Her name is um in the movie is called uh, Nomi or or yeah I think her name is Nomi and um uh, Lashana uh Lan- Lanch I I I I I I can't I, I'm terrible at saying names. Um, but her, her name is Lashana. I, I know her from Captain Marvel. Um, she plays, um, I think, if I'm correct, I think Monica Rambo or Maria Rambo. I, I'm not quite sure. Um, let me look this up real quick. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, Maria. She plays Maria Rambo. So, um, yeah, so I really liked how we ended up seeing the new new double o and seeing how much the times have changed since he's been retired all these years and you know it's funny enough because you know the Brit- british intelligence thinks that he died and that's that's what uh m's you know excuses is like oh we thought you were dead that's why we gave um you know um that's why we gave uh you know the the new the the, the your your uh you know the your replacement the name 007 and it was just cool to see all that go down and see their level, like, you know, like, 
rivalry, but yeah, they have respect for each other, and that's why she gave him back the, the the title 007 because he even said, you know, like you said, it's just a number, meaning she understands how the what that number means to him and 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 why that is his number and stuff, and meaning that you know, I it doesn't it doesn't take away that I I'm the new, you know what I mean? Like I'm a double O. It doesn't take that away from me. It's just a number. You know what I mean? Like you said, so. I'm excited to see where she'll go, the new double O, in the future of the James Bond franchises and stuff. So I'm excited to see if they'll even be, if they'll still call it James Bond. I, I don't even know because that James Bond, as we all know, you know, you know, in this movie or whatever, like, you know, we know where that, like, it's a kind of like a passing of the torch movie. So it's like, what will they call the new James Bond movies going forward? Because James Bond is no longer, you know, you know there anymore so it's going to be interesting to see you going forward if the if the movies will be called james bond or they'll just be called double o whatever so i'm excited to see where it's going to go the franchise going forward I, again i thought this movie was awesome you know rami malek killed it as the villain you know um it's like uh his name in the movie was like lucifer um it's like a weird name it was like um lucifer something it was it was a very very weird name in the movie um what was it? Uh, Sephan, Seph, Sephan, Lucifer Sephan, um, and he's like the the, the uh, as part of a bigger corporate, like uh, you know, global, like you know, uh, you know, corporation. You know what I mean? Like uh, you know, against Spectre and stuff, and it, and he, he deals in poisons and stuff. So I thought that, like, I thought that was like a it, they're really taking a step up. Like the dude's like ten times more worse than you know the leader of Spectre. And he, even the leader of, the, of Spectre doesn't even know what's going on in this movie. So about like who's taking them all out, who's doing this, this and that. And I just, I, I, I loved that he was even afraid. He was even wondering what was happening. And, you know, you really felt the threat level. I just wish we got more of Rami Malek's villain in this movie. And I wish that, you know, again, you know what I mean? I, I, it made sense for the, like, I, that, it made sense that I did feel or whatever, because again, it's a three hour long movie, and I did semi feel the runtime, but I mean, I'm not going to like down, I mean, oh, because I felt the runtime, I'm not going to be like, oh, this movie is bad or whatever. I mean, like, it, it made sense that they wanted to make it long. It made sense that they're trying to do this big, you know, you know, uh, you know, finale for again, Daniel Craig's last James Bond film. So I didn't mind it. So literally I'm going to give this movie literally an A plus. I loved this movie. Um, again, I think it's my favorite out of all of the Daniel Craig, James Bond films. Um, you know, again, Jan Daniel Craig is my James Bond. So, you know, I, I'm not, I, 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 uh, I watched a little bit of all the other older James Bonds when I was younger. Um, on the top of my head, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna figure out which James Bond movies I watched when I was younger. I didn't watch any of, like, the older, older ones, like, you know, Sean Connery. I didn't, like, I didn't, like, I didn't watch, uh, you know, any of his James Bond movies, um, but I watched, um, what was, what was his name, what's his name, what's his name, um, uh, Pierce, uh, Bros Brosnan. I watched his James Bond movies, like, that's the movies I watched with, you know, my dad and stuff, and, I liked those movies, but like Daniel Craig is my James Bond. So, guys, I really do give the I really do give this movie an A plus. If you guys like the if you guys like action, if you guys like great you know character development, great story building, um you know a, a great you know like villain, this is the movie for you. Again, I thought this movie was awesome. Again, it is a three hour long movie. I really want to know down in the comments below if you if you have seen this movie, which I I, I believe if you're watching my re my review. This is a spoiler review, so. I ain't getting into too too in depth with you know the uh, you know with the spoilers and stuff because I mean you know it's a spoiler review I don't want to give you know too much away because sometimes people can click on it by accident and I mean that's such a big moment what happens at the end of the movie that I mean makes sense because this is Daniel Craig's last mo movie and you guys can like you know s hear what I'm saying and you guys will get the drift on what happens at the end of this movie um, and hence why why I'm saying will it be called James Bond going forward if you get my hint and you get my drift um, but literally I just I loved this movie I thought it was such a perfect ending to his franchise and he will be missed I, I really loved him as James Bond he's a great actor I can't wait to see him in all the other Knives Out you know spinoffs and sequels he's gonna be making um, and just see where he's gonna go going forward in his acting career. I heard he just got, you know, a, a star on, you know, the Hollywood Boulevard. I, I heard he finally got one, 
which, you know, it's crazy to me that he finally got one. I mean, he's such a great actor. I'm shocked he didn't get one a long time ago. It, it shocks me also, like, how long it takes, I guess, I guess to get a Hollywood star. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I, I guess it, you know, it just, it, it just on Hollywood Boulevard, it just shocks me how long sometimes it takes, you know, actors and actresses to get their stars. It's just crazy to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, his, you know, his future is really, really bright. It's always been bright. I just can't wait to see what else he's going to be doing in the future. I can't wait. I, I, I can't wait to see where, you know, LaShawn, LaShawn does, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, double O goes going forward and see where that universe goes going forward because she kicked ass in this movie. Um, with your, you know, with her double O, she just kicked ass and I would totally love to see movies with her going forward. Um, and I feel like, you know, it was in a great way to appeal to everybody that, you know, it's, 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 again, it's just, it's just a number. Anybody could be double O set, double O, you know what I mean? Going forward, be the new, you know, face of the James Bond franchise. I mean, anybody can do it. It doesn't matter, you know, you know, what, you know, you know, what, like, you, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Like you, it could be a guy, it could be a woman, it could be anybody. It, it doesn't matter. So I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of happy they said that, you know what I mean? In a, in a, such a perfect way that it doesn't matter. Um, cause again, it's just a number and that's, it's so true. It's just, it's, it, it, he's 007, but there could be a double O whatever. Again, it's just a number. Anybody can be a secret agent, a secret agent kicking ass, you know, for, you know, for British intelligence, anybody can be doing it. Um, but yeah, um, I just love this movie. I can't, I, again, I can't wait to hear it down in the comments below what you guys thought about this movie. Um, which one, I, I want to know down in the comments below, which, which, uh, you know, uh, which movie in this franchise is your favorite? Um, I really want to know. I'm going to name them, you know, right now, probably I'm going to name them. Um, I actually have my, uh, my, uh, the Daniel Craig, uh, collection for his James Bond movies. I got this years and years ago. Um, I'm thinking about getting a Blu-ray version of this. If they come out, like if they already have it, maybe I'll get it. But I got the collection. I think it was like one, like two, three year, three years ago for um, a Black Friday on Christmas. Um, but yeah, this is it right here. It has all of them in here. Um, the only one it doesn't have in here, unfortunately, is Spectre, which I do got to get, I think I actually, I already have Spectre, I think it's in my, it's in my drawer, um, but yeah, if I'm being honest, how I would rank them is I would do, I don't know, it's so hard because I loved this movie, but I love Spectre, uh, I'd probably do, I loved that beginning sequence, so I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give it, um, you know, No Time to Die, it's probably gonna be in the same order. No time to die. Uh, Skyfall. No, no time to die. Spectre. Skyfall. Um, I would probably do um, probably Casino Royale. Then Quantum of Solace. That's probably how I would do it. Um, again, that's a, it's probably a weird ranking for some people. There that would be like, oh, you really? Yeah, but that's that's that is the way I'd rank them. That's the way I like them. Again, I love all these movies so so much i think he did a great job again daniel craig and he will be missed but i'm excited to see where the franchise goes going forward but guys that was the video again if you're new to the channel subscribe to the channel put in those notifications like this video because it helps push this to the algorithm it helps bring people a part of the family here on this channel and again i would just love to have you guys here a part of this family here on this channel we're all about spreading love positivity and motivation we're almost to 400 subscribers right now we're at 378 almost to 400 i'm really trying to get to 400 before the end of october and i'm really trying to get to my goal is to get to 800 before the end of this year and i know we can do it if you guys just subscribe to the channel put in those notifications and like this video and can just come join this family um you know because you know i i would just love it um, but guys, I just can't wait to hear down in the comments below what you guys thought of Daniel Craig's last James Bond film. It's just crazy to me that he's played James Bond since 2006. That's just insane. Since 2006, he's done five films. That's just, that's crazy. Um, and he kicks ass each time and he just does a phenomenal job. It's just, he will forever be my James Bond. And I just, I, I he just did a great job. I'm excited to see he will be my next game, you know, you know, you know, double O, um, you know, going forward. You know what I mean? If if it is Lashonda, I'm I'm so so down for it. Again, she just kicked ass in this, in that movie. I just I can't I can't get over it. Um, this is a movie I'm probably also gonna watch again. I'm gonna get it on Blu-ray when it comes out, and I'm gonna put it a part of the collection, and I'm just gonna love it so so much. Also, I'm gonna get the poster after we're done using it at the theater. Um, that's the one perk I have is I get you know posters from the theater and free movies. Um, so yeah, so I can't wait to get the poster when I, when I, when I can get my hands on it. Um, but guys, that was the video. I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.